the Oyen Fire Brigade. 100 years of people helping people. Working as partners with the community with a clear vision of protecting lives and property. A little over a century ago, on the 1st of January 1919, saw the official establishment of the Oyen Urban Fire Brigade. With Oyen's population of 904 at the time, 15 members signed up with W.A. Ritchie as captain and were registered with the Country Fire Brigade's board. The first fire station was built in 1924 at the existing site in Pickering Street. The brigade's original firefighting equipment was hose reel and then updated to its first truck, a Dodge Pumper, in the 1930s. When I made an application to join, there was a waiting list to join the reserve, uh, the reserves of the fire brigade. There all seemed to be a waiting list, and um, I had to get permission from my father uh, to join because the the joining age, and I don't know whether it was a local rule or a. What was called then, when I joined it, was called the Country Fire Brigade's Board, which happened in 1947. The old weatherboard uh, building uh, had um, just a, a one vehicle entrance. You used to leave the door open during the day. There was someone living close by that used to just open the doors and they were uh, clipped back in an uh, open position. The captain of the fire brigade when I first joined was Bill Blair um, and uh, 15 active firemen as listed and that was the limit by the country fire brigade's board at the time. But you could have as many reserve members as you could line up. But of course the uh, the size of the building and the facilities available limited that to some degree. I think after I joined I was elected foreman uh, pretty quickly. The uh, office bearers in those days were captain, lieutenant, foreman and secretary. The others were just uh, listed as active firemen. And Soon, I think in the 1950s, I was elected captain, and uh, I think I'd done three terms. At that time, the, the terms were three-year terms for election of office, officers. One of the things I recall is the, um, is the sounding of the alarm. Of course, it was, well, these days it's... Uh, uh, firemen are alerted by the, a siren in the er, earlier days it was by bell installed on the top of a tower. There was a certain ring of that bell that indicated to members of the public and of, uh, to members of the fire brigade uh, whether the fire was north, south, east or west of the fire station and on the eastern side of big or a large uh, piece of steel piping uh, erected on a gantry and somebody uh, in close proximity used to copy the rings of the fire bell by belting that uh, steel pipe with a, a piece of uh, another piece of iron you know, a couple of quick dongs for to indicate the fire was east and some long, slow dongs if the fire was west of the fire station, those sort of things were... Uh, the uh, turnout was con would consist of only uh, on foot with a reel, a hose reel that was pulled by, on foot by the firemen to the place of emergency. We lived right opposite the fire station. Um, of course, every time the alarm went, well, 
being very inquisitive, you always came out and had a look. And uh, I used to spend a, a lot of time hanging around the fire station just with earlier captains like Bill B, Peter Williams, um, Whooper, Max Emmett, Joe Tipping. It just really developed it. Once I turned 17, I, I joined. Um, I was here, I might as well, might as well be in it. Uh, I joined in 1955 um, and I've been there ever since. I was fortunate enough to be elected captain. I took the position over from um, ex-captain Arthur Wilton and I was f lucky enough to hold that position for 30 years. And then uh, Trevor Mills took over the job from me and he's still, he's still holding that position very capably at present. It, it worked quite well. They had, uh, had a separate brigade from the urban brigade um, separate officers, um, the, brigade, the brigade was um, supplied with a tanker. Originally we had a little C-1300 um, four-wheel drive international and that brigade worked, worked very well. It, it usually meant that um, members of the urban brigade turned the truck out because they were, they were in town. Um, where m most of the uh, members of the rural brigade were, were farmers who had to, had to get here, so in lots of cases we turned the, we, I was a member of both brigades, but the urban brigade turned um, turned the tanker out and manned it until members of, of the rural brigade turned up. It got to the stage where a lot of the members um, of, <coughs> were common to both brigades, um, they decided for administration purposes to combine them into one brigade, so we formed the Alien Fire Brigade. It ran a competition within the brigade uh, in the old building. It used to have a couple of uh, long coir mats that were run out from the back of the building to the front and they were anchored to the back wall with a couple of dummy plugs, just to, fire plugs just to sit on the floor and the competition for the martial events were pretty keenly contested by everybody had to have a go and uh, that created a lot of uh, fun as well as good practice for use of the couplings and uh, the fire hoses and so on. Uh, the first demonstration held after the war, 1948 in Ballarat and the uh, Alien Brigade uh, attended that, boarding a train, a special train, or a special carriage on the Mildura Melbourne train, carried the firemen to Ballarat, including the Mildura Brigades, Redcliffe, Smurbane, Mildura. 1949, again, the demo was held at Ballarat, and from there on it went to Bendigo, Geelong, back to Ballarat and various other major major towns or cities in Victoria. Owen fared fairly well in competitions in the state demos. Uh, the captain at the time, Bill Blair, was uh, considered uh, one of the fastest runners with the hydrant in the, st in the state. Basically my father, he's, he's been in Caniva Fire Brigade for uh, 70 odd years. He was very heavily involved in uh, in all aspects of the CFA down there and uh, he was very involved with the running side and while he was training on the wet track I was playing with the hose etc on the dry track and I got involved with the fire brigade there and then sort of, so I suppose it's bred into me really. Uh, and then I moved down to Horsham and uh, met up with a few guys down there and started joining the brigade and doing things there. And, Obviously when I come to uh, Oyen, um, a good way to join and uh, meet people in the community was to uh, join the brigade here. I've been in the brigade ever since, so, yeah, that was in 77. When I first came here, there was obviously the rural brigade and the urban brigade, and I was involved with the urban brigade basically. Oyen had a, a run, pretty successful running side and uh, myself and uh, Chris Milner and a couple of others turned up and uh, enhanced the, the side and uh, yeah, we had some quite good success around the state with, uh, at state championships where Chris Milner especially won the one-man marshal, which is a, an achievement in itself. 
uh, and the brigade had some success uh, at the centenary of uh, the CFA centenary competition where we we got it, uh, broke a state record in the four man competition and uh, it got beaten the next run, unfortunately. <laughs> so, yeah, so we were, we were a very short, uh, short period of uh, success there, but anyhow, that was great. But we had a lot of, a lot around the, the uh, regional areas, we had a lot of success at regional competitions. A couple of years of being here, I became uh, first lieutenant, which is second to the cap captain, so you got the captain and the first lieutenant, and then there's other lieutenants underneath it. Um, which we all had certain roles to perform within the brigade as far as uh, obviously the first lieutenant was learning the role of the captain so that when the captain stepped aside the, you'd basically step up and then obviously the lieutenants, other lieutenants were uh, looking after equipment and uh, stuff like that. Um, yeah so I, was, I became a lieutenant uh, a couple of years after I first arrived here until 94 when I became captain. I've been captain ever since. What do we do? We used to raise money for them to start with and you know with the juniors yep. when we had a junior team yep. we had to um, so finance they, things a bit so they could go away on their trips mm. they went to demos and stuff mm. yeah we had street stills we had lots of coffee mornings didn't we here mm. at the station mm. at the old station we had lots of cycling we were recycling the office bearers weren't we Faye? Mm. most of us we had a, a in our rules that you could only take on a position for two years so we had a biannual meeting and you took on a position but you can only take it on for the two years then you have to get out and we, we'd gone through recycling a couple and no one else was willing to stand up and mm. And I guess we'd sort of moved on and the kids had moved on and yeah. the husbands were still there, but then there didn't seem to be as much fundraising we had to mm. do. Major fires that I've uh, been involved with, uh, obviously the, the uh, pinnacle of that is a house fire in Gregory Street that claimed the life of five children. And then there was another one that virtually at the back of the fire station that claimed the life of the father of one of the active members at the time. I didn't quite have the uh, traumatic experiences with a couple of fires that Arthur mentioned. Uh, we had some very big scrub fires that have caused us um, a fair bit of trouble from in the south of Oyen in the Bronze Wing area, uh, another, we've, um, we had a couple of bad fires to the north of Owen in Hatter, um, Trinidad area. We have been fairly lucky I think in recent years that we haven't had the bad dwelling fires that we used to get years ago. I suppose, I suppose that in some cases the absence of open fires, um, most homes have got smoke detectors fitted now and I think that probably makes a bit of difference, I mean it. Oh, I think the cabarets would be the, you know, yeah, the, the, they would be. had the fun because it was always a, um, a Melbourne yeah. Cup theme, you know, we rode on horses or they had the wind up horses or, yeah. And oh, well, I was, I was a jockey a couple of times. Yeah. Oh, there used to be queues at the front. I, the, I remember I was working there then and you had, we had to have the door shut, nine o'clock open up, chung. But then, and that was also, they were limited to just 12 a, t 12 a person. Yeah. Mm. So, and we, I think we sold 220 tickets and they were gone just like that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Enjoyed those times. We, yeah, we the kids got involved break. and we went away to fire demos and that was good mm. family things. We took tents and camped and went yeah. from one place to the other for a long weekend. And we had those family days out at the um, Earhart oh, Sand Hills. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, you know, of a just to keep things together and yeah. but the kids were great you know when they were in the running team and yep. mm. Mm. juniors has been uh, been a great thing for for us um, we started right back and I think it was in the, about the mid 80s uh, when, when my, my kids were, were young and uh, a lot of their friends would decide to join so uh, we had, we had a, a stint of probably 10 years and we, I think we ended up with about 16 or 18 kids at one stage of the game doing juniors and uh, we had some, uh, a lot of competitions and stuff, it was 12 months a year um, doing competition for the summer period and then uh, they were learning a lot of uh, fire brigade type stuff uh, during the winter months and having a lot of fun, I think they, the kids seemed to enjoy themselves. It was pretty, pretty hectic at times but yeah it was great. 
but unfortunately it just sort of petered out uh, probably uh, uh, in the late, late uh, 2008. Sort of growing up in terms of Owen, um, I wasn't sort of interested in sport as such, so like, I'd, I'd played cricket and basketball and that sort of thing, but I wasn't all that interested in it. And then um, one particular weekend, I was staying with a friend and he was involved with the juniors. And so basically we come down to watch them. They were training for a competition that they were going away to. And um, yeah, I was just sort of watching them one, one night and then they uh, said, told me to join in sort of thing. So I joined in and then, um, yeah, I just sort of went from there, joined in, joined up and here we are. <laughs> bit, nearly 20 years later. Trevor Mills was the one that uh, initially started it up uh, and there was a couple uh, juniors around the town that uh, sort of needed a, a mentoring program as such and um, so he set that up and uh, yeah it just sort of escalated from there. I think he, he sort of tried to keep it around uh, at least 10 to 15 uh, juniors at a time to go away to competitions and everything. We had a junior brigade they were going for quite some years. A few members from that are still members of our brigade and, and quite active members. But we're finding that seven or eight or nine, they will join the brigade, but <clears throat> then they go away to either to university or for employment. And uh, we have trouble retaining them. That's why you see dinosaurs like most still sitting around the place. We changed the batteries in uh, well in, in excess of 100 uh, batteries, smoke detector batteries for people, older people in the community who can't get up to the ceiling to change their their batteries. Uh, we started off with the juniors when we had juniors going. It was one of their little projects that they used to do, and we used to go and help them. And unfortunately, juniors have dropped off, so uh, now it's back to the seniors. And uh, uh, George Strickland's one of our members who can't go to fires anymore. Uh, puts his hand up to do them, so yeah, he does a fantastic job, and that's great, you know, protection for the community. So we go around the town and we make sure that all the uh, fire plugs around town are all clean and accessible, so that if we ha happen to need them, uh, they are okay. And uh, Barry is another one that sort of can't uh, go to fires anymore, but uh, he's put his hand up and he spends quite a few hours going around the town cleaning plugs and stuff like that, which is a, a great, another great initiative that the brigade's had. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, another one. Another thing we do is uh, fire equipment maintenance, uh, which uh, involves the servicing of fire extinguishers and uh, other protective premises of stuff. Uh, we've been doing this for so as many years as I can remember. Uh, and Dennis Mariner is the guy that really has put his hand up for that and does a fantastic job. Uh, but it, it is really our only income that we get for the brigade, and it, it keeps uh, keeps our funds rolling over nicely, which is great. It saves going out selling raffle books and tickets and stuff like that. Because we're part of the CFA and the CFA uh, support other states and also uh, if the, uh, part of the state has a, a big campaign fire, and I'm just doing it like actual Wednesday which is very pertinent at the moment, they're 10 years uh, and even prior to that uh, we've been, uh, been away on a lot of strike teams, uh, a lot of members of this brigade which is fantastic for the, for the brigade and for the district. Now we've had guys go to uh, two or three of the camp campaigns in uh, uh, New South Wales and uh, Bansdale area, Bendigo, yeah, so yeah, yeah, Grampians. When they've had their bad fires, we've we've sent crews away. So it's uh, it's pretty pretty significant for the brigade to be able to support that sort of stuff. One one of the standout features. Uh is the full-size billiard table that was donated to the brigade in the 1940s and it's still in in use in uh, in good condition that was uh, donated by joe walsh who was had a drapery store on the corner of oak and pickering the members of the fire brigade dismantled the table and carried it across pickering street 
to the fire station on ropes and that. There's a because there's a ton of slate alone in that billiard table. And uh, but it's proved a great asset to social activities and the, the brigade since. We're not a terribly active brigade. We, we do we get 30 or 40 call outs a year. I just um, a few days ago going through the re reports over the last seven or eight years. And um, we have had up to 50, but you know, it's usually in the high 30s, 40s. And call outs are probably just as high because in the earlier days, we weren't called out to um, motor vehicle accidents. Well, nowadays, we're, we're just about called out to everyone. The equipment we've got now is much better. And the earth moving equipment's called in pretty early in the piece. Radio, um, pumps, breathing apparatus, makes it much easier. Brand new building we've got now that we're in look fantastic you know, compared to what we used to have. Uh, it certainly makes life a lot easier. Um, yeah, look, uh, training, training's been a hell of a change. Uh, gone from just putting on a pair of overalls and hopping on a truck to uh, being fully qualified in a lot of areas of the CFA and, and uh, <coughs> the, the guys in this brigade have uh, really stepped up there and it's been fantastic the, the qualifications we've got and uh, very capable guys. Aircraft would have to be the best thing since sliced bread I reckon as far as we're concerned, especially with the ones that are stationed here in Alien. You know, they can be in the air and at the fire before we even get out of the shed half the time. And they can tell us basically what's going on and they can hit the head of the fire and, and certainly restricts the, uh, the effects that the fire ha has on, uh, on the community or the, you know, the farming community. Yeah, yeah it's been, been fantastic. Well, the Yoyan Brigade, uh, because of our situation and the fact that uh, we're basically the only urban brigade within our group and our group uh, is involved brigades from uh, Walpi up and Underbull, Tempe Speed and Tariff and Midiac, so that's our area, plus up to uh, Hatter. So we cover a fair area and we support those brigades primarily, but uh, we also do go to other places if required. So uh, it, it really depends on what the CFA require. If uh, Normally it's a, a two vehicle turnout to most instances, but they do step up to five or six, or if it's a big one, a lot more vehicles, so therefore we, we get involved in that. The CFA uh, supports us. Pretty much, I mean, so a lot of things change, as you know, with the occupation, health, and safety, and stuff like that. So everything's evolving all the time. Uh, and communication is a perfect example of the, some of the radios we used to have years ago to bet what we've got now. It's just, it's very hard to keep on top of it because there's so much change in the CFA at the moment. But yeah, look, great support. Yeah, the actual uh, Country Fire Authority sort of. Uh, and, the, and the district people, uh, operations officers and office, operation managers and stuff like that support us, support us, th this community. Arthur Wilton. With over 70 years of service, captain for nine years, Country Fire Authority Life Member and Oyen Fire Brigade Life Membership awarded in 1996. John Nile. With over 60 years of service, captain for 30 years, Country Fire Authority Life Member and OEN Fire Brigade Life Membership awarded in 1996. Trevor Mills. With over 40 years of service, current captain now and has been for the last 25 years, OEN Fire Brigade Life Membership awarded in 2005. Dennis Mariner. With over 30 years of service, Oyen Fire Brigade Life Membership was awarded in 2016. John Nile in 2006 and Trevor Mills in 2012 were awarded the Australian Fire Service Medal. This recognises distinguished service by members of Australian Fire Services. It's awarded for services seen to demonstrate a high degree of resource and devotion to duty in a particular situation or in an exemplary discharge of special duties above and beyond normal work. I, I call Doc and Whooper the godfathers of the Alien Brigade because you can always go back to those two hours to, to discuss, to chew, chew the fat over whatever, whatever there's a problem or a concern. And you know, unbelievable what they mean. Like Doc's 30 years as captain and, and Whooper's nine, nine years as captain. So, 
39 years of captains of the brigade and, and uh, they've always been involved in the brigade and, and, and not just the AIM brigade but the group and also the district. In conclusion and, and to uh, emphasise the uh, fact that this is 100 years of the AIM fire brigade, uh, I'd just like to say that it's all volunteers. Over those 100 years we've, we've served the community uh, it's not just the call outs that we get, it's always the training and all the rest of the stuff that we need to do and, and to do it as a volunteer is absolutely fantastic and I can, I can commend every member of this brigade. Thank you.